Hey, what's up, garden friends? That's not normally how I start a vlog. It's been a few weeks since I vlogged, so real quick before I get into things, just wanted to say hello to everybody. And for everybody who's new here, just to kind of fill you in on what's going on on the weekends, on Saturdays, I vlog just little clips of things, little projects throughout the week that weren't worthy of like their own video or just things happening in everyday life. So that's what happens on Saturdays. I use my phone for it and that camera is going downhill. So if you've ever wondered like what's with the more formal videos during the week and then these really random sloppy videos, that's what that's about. I try to make it so it's not too sloppy, but it's just more casual. It's just like a chance to connect in everyday life sorts of things with everybody. I'm not gonna go on too much. I'll just say, hello, hi new people. Hope y'all are doing well. Welcome to the channel. And uh, go ahead and jump on in there. Oh, it's a beautiful day. Ready for some coffee. It was really windy last night. It was so windy. How windy was it? It was so windy. Lost a pine tree. Yeah, it's a big one. Took out part of the fence. So uh, let's go to the hardware store. Gonna get some straps and a winch. Think that I can tie up to that oak tree, wrap it around that trunk and pull that sucker back up. What do you think? Yeah, I don't think so. I was just kidding. It's gotta go. It definitely wouldn't be safe to pull it back up. Now someone's gonna have to come out here and cut it down. I could cut it down. It's in the neighbor's yard and I just, I'd rather a professional come out and do it because they clean up and make it so tidy and whatnot. And then the insurance part with the fence and everything, I think that an insurance is going to reimburse me for doing it. So I don't know. This just happened. I just woke up. I haven't even coffeeed yet. It's too much. I can't take it. And uh, I was passing by Lowe's and I saw they have some stuff outside. I just want to have a quick peek. Sometimes they get some cute figs and things in. Uh, not that I have room for anything from Lowe's in the car because the car is full of furniture. It feels so good to be at Lowe's. What do y'all think about these new airplane displays? I mean, I like them. The prices aren't bad. Just uh, wonder how they're going to hold up. Alright, Lowe's is stepping it up. Look at these trays. They're all wicked. I mean, it just, that's so smart. Makes so much more sense. Power palms are in tall pots, which is good. They've always been in shallow pots that they don't root well into. I'm liking this. Got them wicking grows. It's way too soon, but I'm all right with it because it makes me happy. It is February 22nd. If you're wondering, because, you know, people don't necessarily watch these when they come out and won't be out till the end of February. Yeah, too soon. It's probably okay for these guys. This is the time of year when I like to look for nice, this is, this is a good one. Good looking little shrubs that, um, have a nice shape to them. Lots of branching in them to use for, like, bonsai type things. Oh, guys, it is very cold. It's like 35 and I think 25, 30 mile an hour wind gusts is what my phone said. Wait, look at the, all the Louisias. I love Louisias. If you ever find these and you have like a rock garden or something, give these a shot. They're so pretty and they're pretty easy to grow too. Okay, pardon my shadow, but look at this one. Isn't that pretty? I don't even know if you can see it. The sun's in my viewfinder. I love that. The purple with the white outline. Some guacamole hookara. That's really pretty. I like those. Those are nice. And of course, hellebores. Pink frost. It's a really popular variety. I feel like that's the one I see the most around here in the springtime. Cute hanging baskets, various violas and pansies. Man, these pansies are huge. Yeah, that just happened. They're on clearance, three bucks a pop. That's not bad, these things grow like lightning. They'll be good. My collection of clearance tropicals is really growing. Look at my, what the? All right, you know, today's just not the day, it's fine. Okay, so go ahead and get out of here. I hadn't planned on really getting anything, but I mean, I think we all know how that goes. If you've been around here for a minute, <laughs> you know my weakness. And by weakness, I mean clearance. It just, you can't beat a good clearance price. Clearance plant. Uh, yeah, $3 a piece. And last time I was there, like, a, maybe a week or two ago, they had all the cordelins on clearance. Not all of them, but they had a bunch, and I grabbed those too. So, in total, with the, uh, I got four of the cordelins and then three of these dracanias, so it's like seven plants for 21 bucks. Not bad. I'm home now, and like I was saying, three bucks a piece, great deal for these things. When you think about like the cost of annuals, 
you can't get like a six inch impatient for three dollars just such a bigger impact with things like these and i don't care about these crispy edges that's no big deal these guys grow moderately fast so by the time they're even outside i think that a lot of that i can have grown out and cut out because from the centers they're looking pretty good most of the damage is down a little bit lower there's some up higher, but like I said, I'm not really that bothered by it. They had a really good houseplant selection in there. The one thing I was really happy about were the ficus loratas, the fiddly figs. They were like 18 bucks and pretty big for that price. Makes me happy to see the prices coming down on those because for a few years, those loratas, I mean, the price was just outrageous. They became a trendy plant and they're nothing new, but they've been around for a long time. So it just became trendy and they started costing a fortune and that was always just kind of a thorn in my side because like this isn't they're awesome plants i love them but they've been around for a long time and prior to the trend they were pretty darn cheap i mean for like just the regulars the standardized ones have always been a little bit more pricey but it's not as pricey as they became so yeah anyways i'm happy to see the prices are dropping back down on those to something that's a little bit more respectful that's enough of that rant i guess okay very very windy. I did see a couple other trees down on my drive home and there were also these pines so I guess they just don't hold up. I'm glad it wasn't any of the pines that are in my backyard along this wall. That would have been an issue because there's a big tie wall there and the trees are right above that tie wall. If this was did that simple was that helpful at all? Probably not. I can just show you that would work too. Yeah see the wall? There's a brick wall there and the pines are oh that guy's leaning. That could be bad. If any of these trees went, if any of those fell down, like that wall could come out. This is all drainage that had to be put in because this all used to be a hill that sloped down and came back up and drained all the way down that end to a storm sewer. So there was a lot of work that had to be done here. And that, oh, that it is leaning, isn't it? That's not great. Uh-oh. I know this is going to sound ridiculous, but if any of these trees were to go, I would really rather it be this oak. It's just gotten so big. It's going to keep getting bigger. Holds on to a lot of its leaves during the winter. The wind blew a lot of them off. That's what a lot of oaks do. And it has created so much shade back here. I used to have a wall of bananas along this berm. They got about 10 to 12 feet tall every single year. It was beautiful, but it's just there's no sun anymore because, because of that guy. And the maple over here has gotten a little bit too big too. But it's just... Why not? You need to go. That's the one. I'm done with you. I'm not really a huge fan of those pines either. I like the one really, really pretty one that's tucked in there, the Norway spruce, but the rest, not so much. But they were cheap. They were like 30 or 40 bucks a piece at 8 to 12 feet tall. Ideally, a wall of like magnolias. Oh, that would be amazing. The Bracken's Brown Beauty is just a wall of those beautiful glossy leaves. Would have been fantastic. Also would have cost several thousand dollars. So it's the pine trees. It, it helps. It creates a noise barrier. Some privacy. You know, the white pines and the scotch pines. More so on these guys. They're just kind of leggy. There's a lot of spacing between their branches. So it's it's privacy. But then they become thin down low. And it's like, what's the... I'm done. It's a, I'm moving on. I swear this little lizard wants to mess me up. Always give me the side eye. I see you. I see you. Quick update. Pine tree's down. There it is. All cut up. I love my Norfolk Island pine. The next day, the getting the tree and everything taken care of, that, that took up a lot of the day. There's still a big old stump out there. You can kind of see through the reflection. At least the fence is back up, which is great. Right now, I'm giving my... Norfolk, uh, good watering. I've talked about this one before. I've had a lot of issues keeping it hydrated because the potting medium that it's in drains wonderfully, too wonderfully. It dries out like almost immediately. So what I've been doing when I've been watering this guy is going through, moving the water around like so, and then just making sure that there's enough water in there that it just kind of comes up above the hole. And then I just come over, shut the water off, and then I'll probably give it like, I don't know, 20 minutes to make sure the soil gets fully saturated. Not too terribly long because you start to lose oxygen and things in there. Water doesn't need to be up very high. It just needs to be enough that it can kind of keep wicking in there. And I've been doing that about every other week. And it's been doing much, much, much better since I started doing that. 
Okay, so it would appear that there's no good angle this time of day in the kitchen, but that's what's going on with him. Doing much better, like I just said. Some new growth kind of starting to pop out of the tips. My other Norfolk, which I still need to go ahead and pull those ornaments off. That thing's been doing wonderfully. I've watered it like four times ever, and it's great. This one, the, it's just the drainage is too intense. What is going on with you? What? You're not going outside. He was an outdoor kitty, not when I have ever had him, but uh, whoever had him prior let him outdoors. So sometimes he goes through these phases where he just wants to be let in and out of the door, which I don't do, but sometimes he makes a bolt for it and, you know, I go out and pick him up, bring him right back in. But the weather, the spring's getting here and he's just, he's all about that outdoor life. That's where he wants to be. The rug, I just, I need to buy a new rug to put here, so I just left the cheap Christmas one there because I need something to wipe my feet on and the dog's feet. Tortoise is laying on top of the vent. Never mind the heat lamps and UV bulbs. He'd rather just lay on top of a heat vent. Like, whatever works. Reptiles know what to do. He gets them under his UV. That's what I care about the most. He can get his heat from wherever he wants, but he has options. Proper options. But today... He decides to lay on the heat vent, which that vent's not even open. I turned it off so that he would use his basking lamp. Hey, Bunkin. You good girl. I love you so much. I love you so much. I'm also noticing, looks like my fluffy little butthead's been over here chewing on my Dracania. What you doing that for, man? Why well, gotta be a butthead? Right, Bunkin? This aloe over here is a variegated aloe. I planted this up last fall. It has been doing wonderfully. This time of year, I don't, when they're in the house during the winter time, it's February, I don't know when you're watching this, but I don't water it very much at all. And when I do, I just use a little syringe and put the water around the base. It's maybe, I've watered it probably three times since November. However, it was in my garage in that grow area and I had it more over with my cooler dormant, like my cacti for the majority of that time, for probably a good six to eight weeks because the kitchen was full of Christmas stuff. And then I bring the houseplants back in when I put that stuff away. So it's that time of year now where I have to make sure to rotate it every week so you can see how quickly they start to lean. It's doing great. Not the best lighting, I'm sorry. I should probably stop filming in the kitchen right now since you can't see anything. Anyways, I'm gonna let that soak for a little bit and then I actually have to run back out. I couldn't get all my errands done yesterday because I had to uh, deal with the tree thing and their car was full because there was furniture and stuff in there and then the clearance plants. Okay, hey, Charlie, 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 get down. Yeah, I know, get down. Hey, 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 hey. Get down, get down, go on. Yeah, you're not allowed up there. He does it anyways though. She's allowed up because it's where she will only eat off of a napkin and she can't, Her she's too little, she can't jump up here so she can't get to the plants. And I know it's people, it's like, oh, it's gross, let your pet on the counter. I use a plate, I don't know about you, I'm not eating my food off the counter. And I, I, nobody nobody eats here, so I'm not concerned about it. I also have a very unhealthy obsession with my kitty and she can do no wrong, right, Blinkin? You gonna kiss before I go? Thanks, but... Okay, so need to hit up the store and get some stuff for the grow room. Yeah, uh, I realized while I was out that <laughs> I, I was buying a birthday present for someone, who watches the vlogs and where I was, it would have been terribly obvious what was going on. So it, I didn't I didn't actually vlog. Oh my goodness, a little bit tired. So here's the breakdown of why I've been out doing the things I've been doing, what's been going on. I had a couple of Edinidia palms in here. If you don't know what happened with those, they had some frost damage and then the heart damage and it just, it was a downhill thing. So. Pulled those out and I'm going to set up a table here alongside the pond. This right here is like the warm zone of this entire grow room. So it's a good spot to propagate things. They have just heat lovers like the Crotons, which I know they don't look great, but they completely defoliated from the random hard freeze we had back in October. So they're actually looking pretty good considering they're just now like starting to really flush out. So it's that time of year where I need to start doing things with the palm trees to start pushing them into active growth. Basically end of February, early March, it becomes much easier to keep temperatures warmer out here. And I'll be able to keep things warm enough that I can go ahead up the number of hours that the lights are on. I'm only gonna bump it up by about probably maybe two hours to start with and um, start upping the amount of water and fertilizing to get them to go ahead and flush out with new growth. And that's applicable to pretty much everything out here with all of the tropicals. So uh, with this space right here, I'm gonna be putting more of the 
little smaller, and this isn't really small, it's probably, you know, maybe 30 inches high, the crotons and the other ones that are back there, just they need to be pulled out. They need to come over where they can get some more light. I have an anthyrum that's going over here. And then of course the uh, Aphalandra Sinclariana. And I need to come over here. I'm gonna lift that hibiscus tree up because I don't really like it sitting on the ground. I don't think it's draining quite as well as it needs to be because even very light waterings, it's getting a little bit of yellowing in the foliage. So I want it to have a little bit more air circulation down there around its roots. So that's what's going on. I'm gonna go ahead and get that done and then we'll come back and talk about it. That more, because I just, I just rambled about it for a pretty long, I'm sorry. So real quick, before I get into the update with what I've been doing over here. Just a couple weeks ago, I talked about how, uh, when I was talking about natural insecticides and things like that, I mentioned I have lizards out here, and I was like, but I never see them. Ever since I said that, I've been seeing these guys out all the time. I don't know if you can see them, I don't really want to scare them off, but there's a little, little Bahama anole over there, a little green anole over here. They've been very sociable. I mean, there's the one, the big Bahama anole, he hates me, but, Otherwise, I don't usually see the others very often, but they've been out. I was even able to, the green anoles were letting me hold them the other day. I'll see if I have the footage of that. But they were just like chilling on my hands, being adorable and sweet. And I think that's because I did, I picked up a couple of females and let them go in here. I did that because I was pretty sure that the only ones who are left, they've been around for several years. Um, were all males so i was like i want to get some females out here because they usually do breed and multiply and they've <laughs> they're really good for insect control not so much with some of the more pesky insects spiders and moths and things like that they're good with that and i just like them they have a lot of personality they tend to hang out with all the tropical plants so i move my plants outside every single spring and when i bring them back in in the fall they're all there normally uh there were have been some losses with these grackle birds that show up here during the springtime so uh i know last year i waited a little bit longer to move some of these guys out and that was partially because those birds, they find these lizards and just chew them up. Mostly the geckos. There used to be tons, tons of house geckos. And um, then when I moved the plants outside, the, those grackle birds just ate every single one of them. It was heartbreaking. There's nothing I could do to stop it. I couldn't catch them because once I moved everything outside, the geckos were stuck to the house and around the lights and they'd go under the siding and whatnot. But the anoles though, they're they stick to the plants. They're more protected from the birds. Okay, but back on track with what's been going on out here. Wait, come on now, focus. I went ahead and I got those pots moved out of the way. I put a bird of paradise back here. I had a very I have two large white bird of paradise, Strelitzia Nicolai, that one of them, this one right here, was on the outside of this bubble because it looks like it had some scale on it when I brought the plants in. So I treated it for the scale and it's been a few months, no sign of anything left on there. So I went ahead and brought that back in, pushed that down there. It has a nice new leaf opening up on it. And then I have the crotons tucked in over here on the table, a Cordelin fruticosa. This is one of the ones I got in clearance. And that one's probably the prettiest out of all the ones that I did pick up on clearance. The rest of them, are more of a dull color. This one's actually starting to color up more since I've brought it in here. The others are outside. So these two, I need to clarify, these two right here I already had, and the other ones are still on the outside of the bubble because I like to coat them with some DE and let them sit for a little while before I bring them in. So it's usually a fungus gnat situation, the peat that they're potted up in and you bring them in and it's just, just to be safe. But this one's super colorful and I know these are from Lowe's so they're from Costa Farms, typically, and I'm pretty sure the tag was one of the Costa Farms ones. And uh, the brighter pink ones from Costa, I think the variety is called Maria. I'll double check on the website because I think they have another one that has a somewhat similar appearance. It's also a brighter pink. The other ones are called like Florida Sunshine or something like that that aren't quite as colorful. Still pretty, but they're not as vivid. So I think that that's the Maria, but I'll double check online. The crotons are already responding very well. Things are sort of packed in a little bit tighter than I would like, but that's actually because I've been filming some videos over here with some plants that I'll be moving off of the table. But um, this one back here, it's not showing the characteristic right now, but well, it's starting to. Let me see if I can zoom in here. I vlog on my phone, so it's not always the best resolution when it comes to zooming in on things. 
but you can kind of see there's a little bitty thing sticking off the end of that leaf that's right above my fingernail. So this variety of croton is called the mother and daughters and they put out like a little bit of leaf on the end of the leaf that looks sort of like a spoon. And it's just, it's neat. It has a lot of extra character, a lot of extra texture compared to just a regular croton. And then the others are, they're, they're in there. I got the hibiscus raised up onto a milk crate so it's up a little bit higher. And I mean, it's only been like a day since I've done all this, so I'm not gonna be able to see any results from that anytime soon. The Anthyrum, this is the only one I was kind of nervous about. So I had this Anthyrum pretty much in the same spot, but it was tucked between two pots. So it was in the little crevice. And so it had really good airflow around it. It was doing really, really well there. So I basically been a little bit more apprehensive about how this one's going to adjust but I think it should be fine it has as of last night this flower bud right here that's come up and grown even further so it's in the same spot it's gonna get the same care so it really shouldn't be an issue but it has really been doing great in here this winter flowering like crazy this is the Aphelandris and Clariana the Panama Queen isn't she beautiful this is one of my all-time favorite flowering tropical plants I did film a spotlight on this plant so make sure you're subscribed so that you'll be able to see that and the video coming out right after this one should be the one here on this Aphelandra I'm pretty sure I did also go ahead and repot my Monstera this is the Thai Constellation. I did a video on this one. That one came out prior to this video. So if you haven't seen that, you can check that out. She is kind of long, kind of leggy. There were a lot of people, I knew this was gonna happen, so I should have clarified it in the video, but there were a lot of comments asking, hey, why don't you just cut that trunk in half and repot it and then you'll have two plants. The reason I didn't do that was because the pot it was in broke. So uh, I, it was fairly dehydrated and somewhat stressed out. And that's not a good time to make a stem cutting like that. Never, ever, ever do a cutting on a dehydrated plant. They need to be fully hydrated. Just to be safe, I wanna go ahead, get this plant nice and adjusted into a fresh pot of soil, get it doing its thing, fill them back out, plump them back out. And just within a day of repotting it, it's newer leaf really <laughs> started to perk up. That leaf was looking kind of sad and that's why I was like, all right, even though the roads are bad, I have to go ahead and get this done. So it's because of the bad roads, I had to go ahead and just get it done. Otherwise, I would have gone out and maybe gotten some more perlite, something like that, to put in here with it. But I just didn't have time. I really wanted to get it repotted. Because, you know, these have become a very popular, very expensive plant. I've had this one for many years. And uh, if something were to happen to it, I wouldn't be replacing it. Because I'm not spending $200 on a new plant. I have seen some of the others that have like a different variegation. This is the Thai Constellation and the variegation tends to be more spotty and more chunky but there are some that look like a painting and those are beautiful and same difference so like I'm still I'm not spending $200 on a new one it's just not going to happen. So I want to take really good care of it and go ahead get it fully adjusted. I'm repeating myself. I'm just not ready to do it basically. I want to go ahead let this plant get nice and tall keep on doing its thing and um, I really, I just, I kind of want to get it going, keep it going bigger. And if it gets to a point where I'm like, okay, this is looking weak, like that's going to snap, then I'll do sectional cuttings. I'll do multiples of them. And uh, I just don't think it's time yet. That's basic. That's the moral of that story. It's just not time yet. So now I have this little table area set up, which is great. It's actually really nice because it gives me another place to film for things that are larger that are harder to get into frame because there's not a lot of space out here more than there's ever been before. I made more room this year than in past years, but it still gets very difficult to film large plants, particularly on like the desk over here, because there's just, there's no room. And I'm using a 16 to 70 millimeter lens for a lot of the videos I do. I could get a 10 millimeter, I suppose, which would be like really, really, really wide angled, but I just don't think that that would be enough of a difference to justify the expense. The lenses for my camera are horribly lenses for all cameras but particularly the sony lenses the zeiss lenses they cost a fortune a lot of them cost more than the camera cost i was looking into getting a macro lens that i thought that i really want to be able to get in really really close on the flowers on some of these plants 
but it was a couple thousand dollars. I'm like, well, I'm not doing that. That doesn't make any sense. I'll just, you know, try my best. And with phones, yeah, see with the phone cameras, you can get in really, really close. That's absolutely beautiful. Wow, that is beautiful. Why wasn't I filming like this the entire time since so just showing you on my hand? I'm sorry. Okay, and then lastly, an update on the fish. That's a ficus. You're in the way. I need to move this. I'm always having to like push it around. And I'm sorry, that was rough. Everybody in there is doing really well. Water is crystal clear. Their colors are nice. Their breathing is nice. Everything's going well since that little ammonia spike and um, everything seems to be going well with the new biological media that I put in there. I didn't completely change it out, I just added some more. So everything in here, everything's good. They're still my little piggies, they're doing well. I think that's everything for this week. I did, I actually already started vlogging for next week because what I'm doing is going to take up too much time to put into this video. So uh, basically I, like, I went to Walmart, looked at their new pottery, talked about that, and then I'm planning on, on the 1st, which is just a few days from now. Oh, wait, no. Today's the 1st. Happy March. But next week and next week's vlog, I'm going to go to my favorite nursery in St. Louis because they close up during the winter for a few months. So I haven't been able to go there in a long time. I'm going to pick out some terrarium plants and things. And they may not have much there at this point because they will have just opened back up. But I just want to go and check it out and see what's going on in there. See what's going on with the plants and everything. Because I have these terrarium planters I've been wanting to do for quite a while, but I just haven't been able to find the plants to put in there. I found some, but just not really what I want. I want a little bit more diversity. So they're usually a great place for that. Like I said, though, they just opened back up, so they may not have had things coming in yet. But it'll still be fun to just get to a nursery. I'm so excited. Oh, what happened to you? Sorry. It's probably my doing like a bull in a china shop sometimes. Okay, but I hope everybody's doing well. Don't forget to like the video, it helps a ton. I really appreciate it. Follow my social media as well. Try to make sure to follow everybody back so we can look at each other's pictures and talk on Instagram and whatnot. And don't forget to subscribe, because I upload multiple times a week. Set that notification bell so you know new videos come out. Oh, one last very important thing. I am potentially going to be doing an order from Costa Farms, a special order. And I want, go ahead, comment down below. Let me know if there's anything you want to see from their website. Maybe I'll be able to get in and do some spotlights on. I know I'm not looking for a crazy variety of things, but they're a good place to get heliconias from for what I'm doing, the type of heliconias I want. And um, the Black Magic Alakaja, I'd like to get my hands on one of those. But comment down below with any suggestions. I think I need that within like three days of this video being out to go ahead and make a list. So let me know. All right, that's gonna do it. Hope everybody's doing well. I say it multiple times because I mean it. As always, most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.